Hello, Sagittarius. Welcome to your reading for March 2019. Thank you so much for tuning in. A big thank you goes out to all you guys for being patient with me and getting these readings out to you. <clears throat> the energies have been quite rough lately, um, and many of us have kind of gotten behind because of it. But nonetheless, here we are. Thank you so much for tuning in. If the, uh, so this is going to be a general reading, <clears throat> okay? So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you would like a look into your own personal situation, you could go ahead and check out the description box below. It does have all of the information that you will need in order to contact me for your own personal reading. If you would like to, you can go ahead and follow me on Instagram at divine underscore conversations. You can also find me on Facebook at divine conversations 2711. So, like I said, this is going to be a general reading. Please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. We're doing things a little bit differently this time around, other than me recording the video so that you can actually see my face while I'm doing the reading and we can have like a bit of a conversation. I'm going to be starting the reading by pulling an oracle card to get the theme of your month and then we're going to move forward with the normal freestyle reading that I always do for these readings, for these monthly readings, yes? And I will be sticking to the norm in, in, in terms of the cards I'm using. So I'm using the, uh, the Unicorn Oracle deck to get your Oracle card, and then I will be using the, Chris uh, I'm sorry, the Golden Universal Tarot to do the rest of the reading, yeah? So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Sagittarians, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for March 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, Sagittarius. My Sajmataz fam, let's see what we've got for you guys for March. What's going on for your month of March here? I'm just going to give this a few soft shuffles. Sagittarius. Feeling exuberant as ever. That's wonderful. Um, I feel like a lot of you could be really excited for spring to come. Ooh, I know I am. I'm really ready to be done with all this cold winter stuff, but... Let's see, Sagittarius, Sagittarius. All right, we're gonna give you guys one more shuffle and then we'll see what comes out. What is the theme for your month, Sagittarius? Let's see here, there it is. Healer, all right. So this says, you have powerful healing gifts. Your, your faith in, oh, I'm sorry. Have faith in your abilities. Stay true to your path as a healer. And with this, I feel like some of you are actually starting to come to terms with your healing ab abilities. This feels very much like some of you um, were not really even aware of what you have to offer as far as your healing abilities. Um, also, some of you are um, uh, redefining is the first word that came to mind, but this all, but this feels, yes, it's definitely redefining, but specifically it's about diving deeper into what you are capable of um, as far as healing goes. And many of you are, or some of you are even redefining what it means to be a healer. Like you're thinking outside of the box of like the normal, like Reiki, um, energy healing, um, even, uh, you know, the, what you would typically find within the spiritual community and even going so far as to redefining, um, redefining even mainstream healing as well. Okay. Some of you could potentially be seeking some sort of training in healing abilities, which is beautiful. Um, and, and I'm feeling springtime specifically. So in terms of um, this, maybe you're starting a new career in as a healer. Some of you may even be going into nursing. Uh, I'm feeling specifically, and you may be starting classes in the spring, like the spring semester I'm feeling. 
It could even be that you're already in school for some such, for something and you're starting the next phase of your uh, your educational journey within the springtime. That's beautiful. Maybe some and some of you are even starting starting your training. Like you're getting the ball rolling. You're getting into training for the first time and the spring semester starts up pretty soon. So that's great. Congratulations. Also, some of you are looking to connect with a healer. And it's not just for learning purposes, it's also for your own healing, which in turn, I feel like is going to help inspire you in some way um, to start your own sort of healing practice. Again, it doesn't have to be what you normally see within the spiritual community or even the medical community, you know, the, really expanding your horizons to something brand new and exciting. That's. That's really beautiful, Sagittarius. Okay, one more shuffle for you, and then we're gonna get into the tarot here. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Also, uh, if you're a cross watcher, boop, this could absolutely apply to you um, somehow. Um, maybe there is a situation in which you were dealing with a Sag Sagittarius individual that has allowed you to open up to your own healing abilities. Um, and I'm getting specifically, this is a pretty specific message, but I'm getting something, um, it's, a, it's more about what you can offer as a healer in your own way, rather than being able to heal this individual that may have catalyzed this for you, okay? Overall energy, <laughs> yes. Overall energy for you, Sagittarius, for your month of March, we're starting you with the Ace of Swords. Learning, this is specifically, uh, this is speaking to you starting some new sorting, sort of training when it comes to healing and healing practices. This is the realization, uh, potentially, uh, of what you can offer as um, a healer. The fact that you really even have healing abilities that you weren't necessarily aware of in the past, that's fantastic. Yes, it can be kind of daunting because it is a big responsibility, um, but it's absolutely something that you are able to handle and overcome and and um, thrive and uh, thrive in. Yes. It, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. But yes, it's definitely something that you are able to thrive in because you have been given the ability to begin with. You wouldn't have been given the ability if you weren't able to handle it, okay? The universe or God, a creator, source, however you describe it, will never give you anything that you are not capable of handling, okay? So that's beautiful, Sagittarius. We have the King of Cups, yes. This can be a water sign, specifically Scorpio. There could uh, be Scorpio energy within you, um, like within your chart or um, maybe you were dealing with a Scorpio, or it could be another water sign, Pisces or Cancer. But what I'm getting specifically for this is the actual, the, taking the action towards some sort of healing ability because um, water often tends to uh, speak to healing of sorts. While yes, water does um, represent the emotions, it does represent healing, rejuven rejuvenization and that kind of thing. You have the magician, and you have the nine of wands, okay? So it's definitely, um, what the nine of wands is speaking to for you, Sagittarius, is um, what you've been through, okay? And it's really a type of realization in which some of you are coming, starting to understand that a lot of the, the tough situations that you've been through in life has been setting you up to be some sort of healer, very much the, the, the wounded healer situation, the, the individual that gets wounded and heals themselves and then goes on to heal others, you know, through what they have learned and all of that. With the magician here, you're definitely manifesting something new. Um, I see you actively ta taking conscious, um, a, a conscious dis direction or a conscious effort towards creating any sort of business opportunity or just a structure, business structure or whatnot to bring to 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 bring forth this healing property and to um to actually put it to good use within the world. That's beautiful, Sagittarius. All right. 
So getting into the rest of the reading here for you, the first half of the, now you can look at this as the first half of the month into the second half of the month because there are going to be two rows here, or you can just look at it as the first half of the reading and the second half of the reading, okay? Energy is fluid, uh, time is an illusion. So uh, however it resonates for you, go ahead and take it that way, okay? First set of surrounding energies in the first half of your reading here, we have the High Priestess, learning, definitely. Knowledge from the universe, higher wisdom here. This goes beyond um, the, the training that we have available in the physical world through like university or um, any sort of training course or whatnot. This is about learning directly from the universe, gaining downloads from the universe, secret hidden techniques or um, hidden knowledge that isn't necessarily available to the masses, to the mainstream, okay? The High Priestess is coupled with the Six of Swords. And, and a lot of what this means here, especially with the High Priestess, and specifically what I heard when the Six of Swords came out was moving away from convention. It's about going deeper into the realm of healing abilities and healing properties and seeing what it is is truly available to you other than what is available within physical existence and what we all consciously know as a, a society when it comes to healing, okay? Excellent. Um, and this is very much about healing yourself too. Again, the wounded healer or the wounded warrior also, okay? Uh, second set of surrounding energies. In the first half of your reading, you have the Three of Cups. The balance between mind, body, and spirit. I also feel like there is a celebration here, whether it be internally or just on the spiritual realm or maybe even, you know, physically with like friends and family. But this is, I, I feel like this is people coming together to con almost congratulate you in taking, um, taking on this new chapter of your life as a healer. This also can, this also does symbolize the celebration of healing your own wounds, okay? After a long struggle. Three of Cups is coupled with the devil. Capricorn energy. Still, this feels like a celebration. Breaking away from the chains um, of convention. Overcoming your own inner demons. Um, for some of you specifically, this is something that you've been wanting to do for a long time and you've felt restricted from it. And now you've finally let that go and now you're moving forward. And that in, its, in and of itself is a huge victory. That definitely is um, a, a form of healing that has happened for you. So congratulations for that, for, some, for whoever of you that's dealing with that. Your challenge in the first half of the reading, you have, wow, the counterpart, the Queen of Cups. So now you have the King and the Queen of Cups. That's beautiful. The challenge here is to remain in a compassionate state, um, also to develop your, your psychic abilities, your, uh, um, your empathic abilities, because I do feel like that's going to be a cornerstone of your practice here. There are some situations for some of you specifically in which you need to be or you will be healing any sort of mother issues, issues that you have with your mother or a mother figure, a grandparent potentially, any sort of maybe a, a feminine figure that you held um, in high accord that may have hurt you in some way or um, maybe even kept you from uh, exploring these avenues. Now, which is an interesting, it's just, it's just, it's just, yeah, it's an interesting concept to think about because oftentimes if you know, you want to be a doctor or something that's highly, um, what's the word I'm looking for? That is usually quite acceptable by friends and family because do uh, being a doctor is a high prestigious type position, but this doesn't feel like conventional healing, okay? So there's definitely, there's definitely someone that could have held you back from that or you allowed to hold you back from that, especially with this devil energy here, okay? The Queen of Cups is coupled with the Ace of Pentacles. Getting started. 
uh, specifically for someone out there. You don't need to have the approval of certain people around you to go in a path that is right for you or a path that your heart is calling you towards, okay? You don't, you don't need their approval. All you need is your own approval. If it's something that you wanna do, just go ahead and do it, okay? But ultimately, this is, this is good. This is, um, the challenge here is, uh, is to just bring forward your own healing abilities and get the process going, start a new beginning. All right. The potential outcome or closing message in the first half of your reading here, you have the two of swords. Indecisiveness now, um, not really being able to make a, a decision because you can't really see too clearly right now. That's okay. It's a time to rely on your intuition. This just feels like I just don't know how to even start doing this. That's okay. All right. Two of swords is coupled with the lovers making the decision but the decision here is about how you're going to move forward for some of you specifically this is this is you you know you have the inspiration here you have the knowledge with the ace of swords all right but now because I just, wow, I really just noticed this. The Ace of Swords was the first card that popped out for your overall energy. And now we're closing off the first half of your reading as the final message or the potential outcome with the Two of Swords, okay? So you had the epiphany, you have the aha moment, but now it's about learn, it's about taking the time to choose which direction to move in. But like I was saying, um, for some of you, this is the indecisiveness as to whether or not you really should be doing this if you really should be going down this path, okay? Um, the lovers is about a choice. It is also Gemini energy, but the lovers is about a choice. Vice over virtue, in my opinion, okay? Vice being the opinions of others and choosing what they think is best for you over virtue being what it is your heart really truly wants and desires. And if it's the practical aspects of this for you, like how are you even going to go about doing this, like learning these skills or starting this practice or whatnot, that's okay. In time, that will all work out, but you still need to make the decision as to whether you're gonna do it at all and then follow through with it, all right? That is kind of the challenge here, but you know, hey, it is, surmountable it is not insurmountable it is surmountable okay getting into the second half of your reading here first set of surrounding energies for you sagittarius you have the queen of pentacles so the queen of pentacles is an energy of um stoicism sure uh uh this is a very much a mother-like energy this is very grounded um uh well manifested yes compassionate and what this what this is saying to me specifically for you guys is this the, the Queen of Pentacles energy is encouraging you to get started and get moving and start taking the practical steps towards learning this ability or developing this ability or developing this practice. The Queen of Pentacles is an energy that is no stranger to hardship, is no stranger to multiple chances. She very much understands the the hardships of life and um, the value in failure or making mistakes, okay? So she's not an individual that's going to easily leave something behind because they're, you know, you're running into trouble with it. As long as you stick with it and you really put forth an honest, honest effort to do better on the next round or at least to just learn about the situation so that you have the ability to do better moving forward and to, to grow and expand, then she's by your side. And that's the energy that I'm feeling here for you. That is what the Queen of Pentacles, I feel like, is representing here. It's that, it's that reassurance. It's that, um, that motherly or parental-like figure, maybe even a mentor, that is here to help you learn and thrive, okay? This Queen of Pentacles energy just feels like encouragement for you, all right? Queen of Pentacles is coupled with, wow, the Hierophant now. So two instances of, I have an eyelash on my, on my glasses. Two instances 
of counterparts between the king and the queen of cups and now the empress and the hierophant and they're all sitting in their same position this is in the beginning in the first set of surrounding energies in the first half of the reading with the high priestess and the six of swords and now the second half of the reading with the queen of pentacles and the hierophant the hierophant here is talking about learning yes it is talking about conventional wisdom okay and so for some of you in terms of this situation here you need you do need to start potentially start with what is already out there with the information that's already out there learning about it um i'm hearing practical wisdom okay but that does not mean that that has to be what you practice it is helpful for some of you this is for some of you but it's helpful to learn what's already out there number one so you can communicate with people that already practice this and then potentially people that you may want to work with moving forward and like combine forces but also so that you can then expand on that and make and maybe take bits and pieces elements from this one and that one and put it together as like a hodgepodge yes but ultimately it's your own personal practice so however you want to express it you by all means go ahead you know what i mean um, this is definitely with learning uh, conventional wisdom i'm hearing specifically conventional wisdom okay second set of surrounding energies for you oh wait also i just recognized you have the lovers and the devil there is a lot of balance here between light and dark, positive, negative, good, bad, masculine, feminine, which ultimately is going to bring the best to your healing abilities or your healing practice. It's through understanding the dynamic uh, between, um, you know, it, the dynamic of duality um, and bringing that together to form a greater whole, all right? And it's very interesting because in the tarot, your card as a Sagittarian, your card is temperance, which is the, the balance between two opposing compounds, the, the alchemy of those two opposing compounds to bring, to create a new comp something else, <laughs> a new compound in the end, right? That's really cool. Okay, second set of surrounding energies for the second half of your reading, you have the sun. Excellent. Illumination. Bright days are ahead of you, I'm hearing. Um, springtime also. Again, springtime is potentially a, a, a time where this may really get off the ground or at least start getting off the ground where you start taking action towards this in some way. Um, Leo energy also potentially, but there's, there's a lot of illumination and especially with the Ace of Swords that has come out as your first card of the overall energy. Um, this is definitely about learning here, but this is also more energies of celebration as this is falling under the Three of Cups. Um, bright days are ahead of you is what I'm hearing here. The sun is coupled with the Three of Swords, right? Now that's, th th don't get me wrong, the Three of Swords is, you know, a troubling energy, but this is illumination through the heartbreak this is absolutely the energy that is allowing you to or has allowed you to heal yourself there has there is illumination that has come into play for any sort of um heartbreaking situations you have experienced in the past and all of this is leading up to lending towards your own healing abilities to help others through their own heartbreak and turbulence yes that's excellent. You, it's like this is very much is like an, a phoenix from the ashes risen type of energy here, um, and it all has to do. It is all. I think for some of you, you're even starting to realize how what you've been through in the past um, has all been just a catalyst towards getting you to where you are now and setting you up for this new phase in your life to be able to help heal others through your own pain and heartbreak and struggle. Right. Your challenge for the second half of the reading here, you have the Six of Cups, the past, um, reminiscing. The challenge is to overcome the past, which I do feel like you're doing very well between with the Sun and Three of Swords energy. Specifically, for some of you, there is still some childhood wounds that need to be healed, that actually you are working on healing, and that some of you are 
are could even be going into working with children, maybe disabled children, autistic children, um, uh, cancer patients specifically. I'm feeling like a St. Jude type of vibe for some of you. Um, that's that's really beautiful. That's really, really beautiful. And I do feel like um, working on your own childhood wounds is absolutely going to help you with those children because it's going to help set you up for um, really understanding, having a greater understanding of where these children may be in their current situation so that you can bring some sort of healing to it. That's so, that's so beautiful. Okay, Six of Cups is coupled with the Eight of Wands. Yes, communication, being able to communicate. Uh, clearly and concisely because you have an understanding. It doesn't mean that you've been through the same things as they. You may have, it's entirely possible, but that doesn't have to be the situation. Ultimately, when you work through healing your own wounds, all your own childhood wounds, you will have a greater understanding in how to help others in the process, in their own situations, okay? So that is your challenge here. For some of you, yes, in the second half of your reading, for some of you, um, and actually, that lines up very, very well with the first half of the reading in your challenge being the Queen of Cups and the Ace of Pentacles, being that nurturing energy, that compassionate energy to help give others a brand new start. And what I'm seeing here in your the second half of your reading for the challenge with the Six of Cups and the Eight of Wands is the more you heal your own inner child, the more clear the air will be for you to really make some major moves for others. Okay, or on behalf of others is how it's being said specifically, okay? Your closing message or the potential outcome here for the second half of your reading, you have the Eight of Swords. Very interesting, Sagittarius, because in the first half of the reading, your closing message or the challenge was the Two of Swords, all right? Both of these figures are blindfolded. So there is some sort of over, there is some, some sort of energy that needs to be overcome when in it, when it involves being blindfolded here. But what I'm getting with this eight of swords is that you really need to just cut yourself out of your own prison. You need to cut yourself out of any sort of mental entrapment. And I feel like I honestly, I really just feel like you are holding yourself here. which makes perfect sense. I mean, the Eight of Swords is an energy of, yes, it's mental entrapment, but at any moment, this person or this woman can cut, can like cut herself free. She just has to shimmy over and do it. But she also just has to choose to do it. Yes, it is easier said than done, but it is possible, okay? Eight of Swords is coupled with the Four of Cups. So what is holding you back is the past, um, specifically. What's holding you back is maybe some sort of uh, rejection. If you were a child or when you were younger, you had some sort of idea or inspiration towards moving it towards some sort of healing aspect or moving towards some, some something in your life that would have set you up for being a greater form of the healer that you currently are, that you truly are. Um, if that wasn't acceptable or you couldn't do that as a, chi as a child or maybe just earlier in life, like before you reach this point, obviously. Um, it is the sadness surrounding that. It's feeling like you've missed out on that that is keeping you bound now. So I'll say it this way. It's much like um, learning, trying to learn an, a new instrument or a new language much later in life rather than having that sort of training as a child where it would have been much, much easier. You would have been able to assimilate it much more. This is feeling like you've missed out. You've lost your opportunity. You've missed your opportunity to, to, to embark on anything like this. And now you are feeling trapped. Well, that is not entirely true. Yes, you may have missed out on the opportunity in the past, but if, if you still want to do it, it's never too late. Okay, so just get on up there, get back on the horse and start riding. Yeah? So, there you have it, Sagittarius. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Again, if you would like a look into your own personal situation, you can go ahead and email me. All of the information is in the description box below. I love you guys so much, and I look forward to connecting with you again for the month of April. Yeah? Take care. Mwah!
バイ。